Let's talk about Pisces. Yeah. Let's talk about Let's talk about- Oh, wait, no, better. Let's talk about Mercury. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about <laughs> all the ways we talk to each other. Yeah. That didn't rhyme. That Can we that leave good. that in? I'm, so sorry. I'm, I'm leaving oh it God. in. Come to me, open mic, and I'll sing that Mercury song. <laughs> yeah, but like can we can we add it? Like, can you do a, a second round where we talk, where we add Pisces into it? <laughs> okay, sure. Oh wait, let's talk about Mercury. Let's talk about it in Pisces. Let's talk about how we talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to the stars. Made me do it. <laughs> the most cringy way i could have if enjoyed you, that <laughs> if you haven't guessed it's mercury and pisces fishes yes <laughs> yes what's up fishes what's up fishes? fishes mercury and pisces or the 12th house so yes happy pisces season what is even happening you know i know i know i feel like aquarius season was seasoned with uh pisces like energy as it was so yeah. now we've got the sun in Pisces. We're not messing around. Mm, yes. And I'm also really excited about this episode because I have Mercury in the 12th. So this is mm-hmm. this is an episode that I was like, as I was diving through all the you know information, seeing how it fit with me. And I was also thinking like, thank goodness again for all of my Capricorn placements because um, having Sagittarius Mercury in the 12th house, mm, <laughs> yeah it's a little do you bit live on planet Earth? <laughs> the thing is i totally do but yeah. thank god you know because mm. it's not obvious if we're just looking at this placement but anyways mm. hey to everybody if you're new here welcome <laughs> this in is true the- pisces season fashion we might be all over the place today it's it's a little chaotic and we like it or we don't have a choice with it but <laughs> Sierra likes it. <laughs> My fixed placements are kind of stressed out. <laughs> I'm I'm fine. I'm the most mutable one here. I'm fine. But if you're new here, what's up? If you've been here forever, thanks for staying with us and check us out over on Instagram at the Stars Maybe Podcast. We've got our separate Instagram accounts. We have me over at Magical Dot Book Club, Martha at Divine Alignment with Martha, and Mimi at Mimi's Dot Me and Harvey Mountain Dot Alchemy. And don't forget to check us out on Patreon, especially, you know, we're talking about, oh, it's Pisces season, all these crazy things. We have a, an episode a week over there where we talk about the transits and everything going on in the cosmos currently. So check us out. Yeah, on there's Patreon. a lot coming up in March. So I know we're only mid-February, but there's so much coming up transit-wise in March. So if you want to know and you want to be aligned with the planets and work with the planets instead of against them, join us on Patreon. Yeah, this is the time. If you're like a mm-hmm. Saturn and Pisces babe, like uh, like Martha and Mimi are, I feel like you guys are going to be working <laughs> through a lot of that Saturn and Pisces stuff over on oh, Patreon yeah. as it's hitting. So I feel like that's a good time to uh, come together and and encourage and commiserate. And cry perhaps? together. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. I was, I was, <laughs> workshop nah, Saturn and Pisces knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, join us where we will share all the nitty gritty of how our Saturn and Pisces is being activated. Yeah. We're gonna workshop our emotions because fucking Saturn get that shit together <gasps> Ooh, and love that. Pisces feeling it out. Oh, workshop yeah. our emotions. Oh, I love that. I love that. And in a completely different route for workshopping emotions, Mercury is nothing about that. No, I'm just kidding. It's a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're here for Mercury and Pisces, and if you have been listening, you know all the good stuff. But if you haven't, Let's talk a little bit about Pisces in general and Mercury in general. So Pisces, just the Pisces, not the Mercury part. Pisces is a water sign. It's mutable and it has that internal energy. So we don't want to say extrovert, introvert, feminine, masculine. We want to say internal energy instead Mm -hmm. of external energy. So if you're wondering what that means, that's what it means. Um, And a quick Mercury overview mercury rules are experience and the way we receive information it's how we translate information it's how we communicate our information it's how we learn it's how we think it's our internal monologue mm-hmm. yeah we process yeah, it's all the that way our mind is always working i think of it as like the voice in your head that's constantly narrating your day hmm. it's like how uh, you're processing everything that's happening around you at any given moment 
I slightly agree with that, but sometimes (laughs) I think my internal voice is like my nadir. Mm, Yeah. Um, So I do think it's my, it's the internal Uh, voice, but but you know, it's the same for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. No, I was thinking of your fourth house, which is Virgo, which would be ruled by Mm, Sir Mercury himself. Yeah. But (laughs) if we're talking about my nadir, my nadir is Leo and I have uh, Leo Mercury. So I guess that's so true. Yeah. Your inner monologue, like it's thinking about like your inner monologue on an emotional spectrum that makes more sense to be the Nadir, but like your inner monologue on like factually processing, I guess that's where I see it being Mercury. Reading a book, doing an assignment, thinking about what you're going to say to someone, uh, thinking about, yeah, at work, a lot of the, you know, it's, it's not really emotionally involved there mercury is pretty yeah. neutral you know mm-hmm. Merc- yeah mercury is so neutral but when yeah. you put it in a sign like pisces that neutrality goes out the window yeah <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, sir mercury over there i'm i swear <laughs> sir I, like, mercury. I th- speaking of how i process information um i just remember as a teacher there were these epic kids books that were it was like sir conference and it was all about math <laughs> told in storybook form. And it was just like, man, for someone like me who does not math it up, I really appreciated that. It was like, yes, give me circumference dressed up as like, you know, a sir. <laughs> That's a perfect I, example of Pisces, Mercury or, or Mercury in the 12th house. Cause it's like imagination yes. and bringing like, like, yeah, bringing a whole other, yeah. Bring imagination to the mix. Yeah. So what are our thoughts? What are our thoughts on, on Mercury and Pisces? Well, Mercury rules Virgo, which means that Mercury in Pisces, which is opposite to Virgo, is not known for being an efficient communicator. It's not known for sticking to the facts, which Mercury, while it is neutral, I think it leans more towards facts and logic and intellect, whereas Pisces is much more about the connectedness to like the ether so if we're talking about communicating to somebody communication is not going to be the most efficient it is going to be imaginative and it is going to be uh very connected to the experience like lived experience that this natal placement like whoever it is is gonna have had and i also think that pisces mercury is such a beautiful like artist placement that they communicate from their soul because Pisces rules the soul. We're communicating um, from a place of connectedness and uh, being able to connect to like the ether around them. I, yeah, I love the idea of it, them being the artist type. And I, this mm. kind of brings me back to that inner monologue. I feel like I, their inner monologue doesn't necessarily have words to it. Like I picture Mm. a Mercury in Pisces walking through like the park and like looking at the sky and like the way they're analyzing and taking in like the trees and the grass. It's like in more of a a visual sense rather than like, I see a tree, the grass is Mm. green. Like, and I feel, yeah, it's, there's no words to the monologue mind you they yes talk, but I, no, that's how I see yes. their, wor- their mind inside of it working I love yeah. that you said that because I remember my mom asking me about like my inner monologue and I was like I don't know I don't know <laughs> and she's like what <laughs> what do you mean what do you mean you don't know like her Aquarius Mercury over there in the second like very fixed very like we've got a system you know and um and I was like yeah, I, don't, I don't really know what my inner monologue do I really think to myself hmm and and with my Mercury in the 12th, I totally get what you're saying. Like, it's not sometimes, sometimes, but it's totally unclear. And it is how it needs to be. <laughs> you know? mm. It's yeah, so pro- that processing things through the way it feels. Mm. Uh, and I just, I really love that, like, vi- uh, visual. Sorry, I literally came up with it. I'm like, I love that visual. But just of them, <laughs> like, feeling and that's the way they process like, okay, in this room, there is this like shelf and there is this plant, like they receive it, like just in a, their whole body takes in as a whole, not just like in their head. That so reminds me of like an acting training. You, there were lessons just on walking into a room 
And like, when you walk into a room, how do you receive the room? How do you recognize the energy that you're walking into? And I feel like when a Pisces Mercury walks into a room, they read the energy before they read like what's in front of them, like they mm. before reading the tangible. And I think with like Pisces Mercury, a, a visual that I get is like a person who's standing just a normal person who's standing, but their head is just surrounded by fog and everybody else sees them. But for this Pisces Mercury, there are so many thoughts going on in this fog. They're making up the fog and they're all connected to each other. And so when you're having a conversation with this Pisces Mercury, everything they are saying is connected to the conversation that you're having. But from an outside perspective, you're kind of like, oh, why are you telling me this? Like, how does this relate <laughs> to what I'm trying to do. And a beautiful example of this was when I was scheduling with our Pisces Mercury guest. Not that I approached it like that, but I was like, great. Like, when do you want to meet up? And she was like, I wake up in the mornings and I talk to my plants and I greet the sun and all of this. Like, and it's the most beautiful thing ever. And to, to her, it was so connected to the scheduling. Whereas my Taurus is like, okay, what time? <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm so excited to talk to her, obviously. Um, but that Pisces Mercury, where all of these thoughts are interconnected, but not everybody from an outside perspective can see why they're connected. I love this. I love this. And it's not exact with like, because, you know, the house is different from the sign, but I'm feeling really, I don't even want to say called out, but really like I'm getting a lot of this, like, yeah, that fog situation. There's so many times where I'm like, okay, I just need to like, let me gather my thoughts before I say mm. it, because the, it, I feel that foggy 12th house area where it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, we need to sift. And at the same time, sometimes there's so many thoughts because things are so connected that they get blocked in the funnel. Like where mm. you're trying to say so many things at one time because I got the fire mercury in that 12th house fog. And I'm like, so many things. And the, the funnel's mm, fogged. Yeah. I need to like, you need to let it dissipate and let things like, yeah. So I can see how that like Pisces, like Mercury being in Pisces, having, because everything's so connected, that almost makes it why I can't give you something straightforward because everything, it's almost like when you hang up those decorations, like on the string, like everything's connected. I can't just take the heart off of it. It's like the heart and the star and the moon and that we're all connected on that string together, you know? And, mm. and it, yeah, I, I really like the idea of the fog and I like the idea of the connectedness so much for this placement. I, yeah. I, another like lived experience that I see a Pisces Mercury showing up with is that the Mercury in Pisces doesn't feel like they need to say things. Whereas uh, in contrast, I have a fire Mercury and it's in a very um, want to be seen way. So I always have wanted to speak and be seen and be recognized for that. And the Mercury in Pisces doesn't want that. My daughter mm. is a Mercury in Pisces and she is almost three years old and not really speaking, but she just started this last like seven days and she didn't feel like she needed to prove herself in that sense before where I was like, do you want to say this? She's like, no, like I, it wasn't, <laughs> it, she didn't have that ego in the way she needed yeah. to communicate. Just like, I will say what I feel like needs to be said when it needs to be said and will be in divine timing. And I don't need to prove anything to you. Yeah, that's that's such a great point for Pisces Mercury. They mm -hmm. never they they're not there to show up as always being right. They're just there to show up as being in the moment and flowing with the energy of the moment. Uh, <laughs> so did the fun. Pisces come in and just like fucking eat that shit up? Fucking, <laughs> fucking took it. I was like, I literally had a sentence about to come out of my fucking face. <laughs> Nothing has looked more Pisces before in my whole entire life. Pisces Mercury is like, <laughs> where are you? Maybe just pause and stare to the sky for a really long moment there that I will probably have cut out some silence for. And it was a real, real perfect example of Pisces energy coming in. Totally left. <laughs> I was I was totally feeling the words that were coming out of my mouth, and then all of a sudden I didn't feel it anymore. And it didn't, didn't want to come out. To be sad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
I can I can give a few um, thoughts from our cosmic science buddy, and then we can comment on them as we go through. Uh, we have Astrology of Cosmic Science by Isabel M. Hickey. And according to this book, uh, Pisces is in detriment. And mm-hmm. that's something that I guess, you know, what you touched on Mimi about Mercury ruling uh, Virgo and Pisces is the opposite of Virgo. Um, but being poetic, psychic, visionary, love of music. This goes with everything that we've always talked about, Pisces. Uh, very sensitive, which that's something, I think that's a very spot on word for Pisces in general. Mm. And I think that we get a negative connotation with that very often, but I think being really sensitive, you know, that there's a total spectrum there. You know, I think mm. that like, because the, they are people that they feel those things, they're processing their information through their feeling. And so there is a sensitivity and they are going to be the ones that can tell when someone's upset when other people can't, you know? Yeah. Whereas Mercury and Aquarius, like emotions are not a factor. Mercury and Pisces emotions are a major factor. And if it's not emotions, it's just how you feel, which I know sounds like the same thing, but like connecting to your senses. And if your body feels like out of whack or something, you're going to know that like, you're not communicating from your most authentic place. Yeah, which goes along with the next thing here of following instinct over reason, where it's like, I felt Mm. this, so I'm doing it. Even if the logic (laughs) says not to, I feel this way. And Mm. also that tendency to react from a subconscious level and not from reason. There's just something that I know. It's just this sensation, this, you know, that sensitivity, that feeling that I have. Yeah. The subconscious level, I'll also like add on a spiritual level, like ultra conscious, because I think subconscious, I peg more to like uh, Scorpio or to cancer. But for Pisces, I peg as like ultra conscious, like being tapped into consciousness at all Mm. times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, we also got here environmental condi- conditions come into play because they react so strongly to atmosphere. So again, that brings in that sensitivity where the environment is affecting them. And more so than, you know, like we mentioned before with that Aquarius Mercury of uh, removing, often removing the emotion from it to focus on the logic of it. And this is like when there's so many factors, I feel like that could be maybe somebody who, you know, with Mercury and Pisces or maybe the 12th house, like can function maybe better in smaller groups because there's less environmental factors happening, you know, as far Mm -hmm. as communicating and, and processing information or however they are learning, maybe it depends on their, their comfortable learning environment because there's so many factors there. Yeah. The mind can get really overstimulated or overwhelmed. And so to isolate for Mercury and Pisces might be really important, or just to know when alone time is really necessary for them. Yeah. 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 And, and that goes with the tendency towards moodiness is what was quoted there and, uh, an oversensitivity and a need to guard against resentment. And I found that interesting because I, I, I can see that. I don't know, because when you take something, when you feel so many things and when you are able to pick up on so many nuances, there is that tendency of taking things personally. And I was thinking about that as I was writing that out and how I think I can fall into that category with my Mercury in the 12th house there. I definitely take things more personally. And then the specific um, information that I brought from this book from the 12th house says Mercury in the 12th house lacks confidence, but hides the fact and interested in occult subjects. So I felt like the lacking of confidence, but hiding it can overlap with the oversensitive and needing to guard against resentment. Because when you feel something really deeply and it strikes you so personal, there is this like need to, um, or it's, it's easy to take things personally when you can feel it so much. Yeah. I think that the lacking of confidence is like one way to look at it. And then the other way to look at it is like, they just are not placing their ego into the situation. Like they're just not putting themselves in the forefront. And sometimes Pisces can tend to, or Pisces tends to mirror because it's in touch with every, you know, every facet of energy that's around them. They can tend to mirror people around them. And that can result in like resentment. If you think about like codependency, when you mirror other people and then you realize that you haven't been yourself, you start to resent the people that you've been mirroring for that reason. Mm. And Pisces, because it wants to blend into the universal energy, it's constantly trying to temper 
um, temper the differences between maybe person A and person B, or maybe their person B. And I think also that Pisces has a tendency to also have rose tinted glasses on, you know, and so it's an idealizer, it's a romanticizer. And when it sees that things are not as green as they were hoping it would be, then yeah, again, they can resent the situation. I really like that, like the way that you put those words into the context that we've talked about it before, instead of like needing to guard against resentment, I really like that mirroring idea that then Mm -hmm. we've also talked about Pisces and boundaries because they're so connected to everything Mm -hmm. that the boundaries that they build, (laughs) sorry, (laughs) Martha just found her pen that had been lost for a hot second. Oh my sorry, God. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but like the, those boundaries that Pisces works to build in order to, you know, protect themselves a little bit more because they have this amazing and beautiful ability to mirror and connect to everything. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, wait, where do I stop? And where does the other person start? Where do these walls like actually exist? And so I can, I love putting that in the context of like guarding resentment. It's more like, wait, I'm mirroring so much that like, who am I really? And wait, I need to mm-hmm. put some walls up, not like totally guarding, but I need to put some some firm like instead of just all loosey-goosey all over the place let's put some firm things in place here so that I don't know yeah and that's where you get into like if someone had literally every single placement in their entire chart in Pisces which woof but I know that person does not exist uh but if somebody had all of that I would say no you don't have to put walls up you're meant to be you're meant to just melt into the ether, but nobody is fully Pisces, right? So in that case, look at if you have this Pisces placement, or if you have multiple Pisces placements, and you feel like you're lacking in boundaries, look at where your Saturn is. Where are you setting boundaries in your life? Look Mm. at where Neptune is too, because Neptune is going to add extra flavor. It's going to add another layer to your Mercury placement. What sign is it in? What placement is, or what house is it in? Mm. Yes. Love that. Love that. There's no, there's no true fish out there. We're all, all the Pisces are partial we're all, fishes. We're all one twelfth fish. Yeah, <laughs> we are though. That's such a good reminder. Everybody's got Pisces in your chart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially during this Pisces season, check it out. And another shout out to us on Patreon. Check it out with us because a whole bunch of craps going on in Pisces coming up real soon. Oh my gosh, so much stuff. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to touch base a little bit more on the self-sabotage aspect of Pisces, because when I'm like thinking about somebody with Mercury and Pisces in a situation where somebody is possibly confronting or honestly not even confronting, but a Mercury and Pisces might instantly go to what could I have done to create a, to create this situation? Or yes. how did I not contribute my energy in the most wholesome and caring way. Yep. And so they can have that internal monologue of, oh, I must have done something wrong because Pisces is the martyr. Pisces is the one who probably assumes the responsibility or the burden of of a problem on their own shoulders. Yes, that is so so true. Like the, the Pisces, because they, because they feel it all and they, it's Mm. like, I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have, there's so much of that, you know, and I'll take it on. And it, if I had done this differently, then blah, blah, blah. And then, like you said before, that can build the resentment there Mm. because it's like, I could have, but then there is part of it where it's like the other placements do come into place. Like, no, but you should have, but, but no, but then there's that like guilt that comes with it. I totally see the self-sabotage that you're talking about. Yeah. And in a world where maybe sensitivity or maybe in your world where sensitivity is not valued in the same way as like in our world, intuition and sensitivity is valued. It's important for you to find an outlet for your empathic nature or for your intuitive nature. And for some reason, I keep hearing like men with this placement, like men who grow up in a society where men should not be sensitive, like this Mm. could result in, and I'm not saying that women don't also, or non-binary folk also don't have this experience, but like it could result in squashing your own voice and in squashing your opinions and your thoughts before even giving them the chance to like live in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an interesting time in 
life to have a mercury in Pisces because yeah, especially for men, but also just in our society and capitalism and like patriarchy emotions are seen as a weakness and just like Mm. really not respected. So it's a, a difficult placement I think to have. Well, and it's in detriment in general, but yeah, I'm, I'm having a very hard time like speaking about it. Like I've been reading about it and like learning about it well forever, I guess, but, um, it's so difficult for me to understand Pisces Mercury because in my head it doesn't go together. Yeah. Mm. So it's, uh, I feel like I've been silent for the last little bit and I'm like, struggling to see it but then isn't that like so pisces that i'm like i cannot fucking understand it i'm like you can't pin it down yeah yeah it's fog you can't pin it down it's like that you know it's dreamy i will say that's Mm. a great word like pisces mercury being dreamy imagine it's easy to understand how they function in their brain alone, but it's hard to understand how it shows up in conversation and in everyday mm-hmm. life where they're re- in reacting and interacting with people around them. Yeah. Mercury and Pisces is the kind of person that like, if you have a problem and you're talking to your friend about it and you want a solution, like you want a tangible solution, your Mercury and Pisces friend isn't there to give you the tangible solution. They're there to give you um, like validation in that you're experiencing what you're meant to be experiencing and that the emotions that you're feeling are valid. Which is ideal for when you already know what you want someone to say. And you're like, (laughs) I don't want you to tell me the other thing. So I'm going to go to this friend and then you just tell me to do the damn thing. (laughs) Yeah. But I can also see them depending on the other placements, depending on where it's located. I could Mm. see a Pisces Mercury being a person who like could be good at devil's advocate in a way because they see it all and feel it all, you know, like Mm -hmm. they, they might take the approach of, I don't think they would, if a friend came to them and was like, the situation happened, I don't think that a Pisces Mercury in general would put their friend down and be like, no, you did the wrong thing. But I think they would more take the approach of, was this other person just trying to blah, blah, blah. Like I could also see them bringing in that approach because there is such a, I don't know, caring, sensitive nature to it that, and like Mm. those rose colored glasses, like you said a little bit, like, are we bringing in the, well, maybe they didn't mean to da da da. Mm. I can see that being a little Mm. Pisces Mercury there as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Yeah. I mean, they, not in the same way as Libra or Gemini, but they like see not just both sides, but they see all sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then thinking about Mercury in like early education, thinking about a kid with Mercury and Pisces in the schooling system, like I feel like activities are really important and like storytelling is really important and anything to keep the imagination going rather than it being just like a strict, here's the task, do the task. It's more, yeah, it's, it's gotta be almost a more fun. I just keep seeing like, uh, remember like Blue's Clues or like these shows that we oh, watched yeah. as kids that were just so they were Piscean in their nature they were so all over the place and colorful and like these watercolors and I feel like that's a Mercury and Pisces brain oh I love that my Mercury and Pisces child would be horrified if I put Blue's Clues on but that's her other placement <laughs> <laughs> she's like no cartoons ever yeah Oh my God. My, my Mercury in the 12th is like, give it to me. Give me, give me fantastical. I want the fantasy. Yeah. Or like Lisa Frank. Oh, don't even get me started. (laughs) Did you just say who was Lisa Frank? Is that an American thing? Um, I wasn't aware. I wasn't Shout aware. Out, maybe all the Canadians are like, Martha, why are you doing us wrong? But <laughs> <laughs> it's those journals that are extremely pink and blue and purple and glittery. And like, it's a very Lisa Frank vibe. That is okay. the, the Lisa Frank. We need to look it up and confirm like Pisces energy. That oh. should be the artwork for this episode is Lisa Frank. All right. I'll make, Wait, I'll do my best. Talking about oh my this, God. I see so much of like a Pisces mercury's house like i feel like they'd be so okay with just like disaster in their home <laughs> because their brain yeah, tell doesn't the story <laughs> yeah like their brain doesn't need like things to be like organized and calm they're just like yeah this is yeah i out living here they do not live in a linear 
way right and that like i think is what i was trying to say when i was talking about like the interconnected thoughts and a haze of fogs like they are non-linear in the way that they communicate in the way that they see things in the way that they like perceive their world uh i i would love like a pisces i think i would love just like maybe a pisces venus uh household would be like very beautifully decorated with like spiritual artifacts and connected artifacts and stuff like that mm. i but live anyway. with the pisces venus <laughs> yeah. yeah yes <laughs> well shall i give our little uh our little alice barkley cat deets so quoting yeah, quoting alice barkley cat with a k we <laughs> have for uh pisces mercury she says storyteller enigmatic and private this is another <laughs> sign. <laughs> what? <laughs> this instantly is like, oh, they're the ones that ghost you when you're texting them. <laughs> oh, that, that absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> like, a, yeah. a non-responsive texter. Um, mm. So quoting her, uh, this is another sign where Mercury finds its detriment. So Pisces Mercury often relays information that it itself does not believe just to test the waters and see how other people might react. Okay, all right. that makes them sound shitty it does um <laughs> <laughs> oh that's interesting because i would pick that more as like a, an aquarius like i i can see how pisces would have the skill to be a devil's advocate but i i don't feel that that would be like their automatic go-to yeah i don't know about that like let's just blatantly lie and see what people say <laughs> oh, i don't know well maybe well, they do um, live in their own fantasy, like they live in their own world. That is so true. maybe to them, it's not a lie because it's just their world. That is true. To each their own. They don't know what's going on. It's someone else's <laughs> The boundaries so, of a lie. <laughs> so we have continued here. It is a complex and almost cryptic Mercury where its own motives are often hidden from themselves until the goal mm. they set out to do is reached. That. Yeah. That feels right. Um, we've got Mercury and Pisces is very good at telling stories. The line mm. between truth and fiction inter, inter, interests interest the most. Sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> the line between truth and fiction interests them most. So I really like mm. that. I love the storytelling idea. I love the truth and fiction. Like, you know, just thinking about um, I think a Mercury and Pisces fits really well into the magical realism category, which is my favorite type mm. of book. But it's very like, you know, it's it's magic. It's not magic. It's fiction. It's truth. Like there's that like, you know, murky waters there. Um, yeah. And then we have, uh, in fact, a good majority of Pisces Mercuries have experiences in childhood where they were unheard or emotionally suppressed. What do we think about that mm. for Pisces Mercuries? I can't um, speak I on that. that. <laughs> Trying not to be biased. Well, I think you have like a perfect example of that. Not emotionally suppressed, but just like the like tangibly unheard, like the whole communication aspect. Oh, yeah. She well. I feel like we, uh, I don't want to put this on like one I know, okay. but um, I feel like we communicate telepathically, which sounds yes. really creepy. Mm. People literally no, do doesn't. not know what my child's saying, but I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know what that means. <laughs> like those, but I know every parent like can understand their kid, but like she doesn't even need to speak. Mm hmm. When I was reading the um, the Skymates part two, which is about composite charts, and I was reading Pisces and Mercury, it was exactly that, where they communicate telepathically and non-linearly. So it's like they could, uh, like, partner one says something and partner two doesn't respond until, like, three months later, partner two says something in response to the thing partner one said three months ago. Like, it's non-linear conversation, and they just, like, n and they understand that that's what they're doing with each other wait I told you guys a story last week about my daughter on the way to school where I I asked she had something on her back like two weeks ago and the school oh. was like I don't know what happened and I asked her like 15,000 times that day and the next day like what happened to your back what happened to your back she didn't tell me and then finally like Two weeks later, I was like, oh, are you going to play with this kid? And she was like, no. And then showed me that they bit her on the back. So it's so mm. funny. That is exactly that. Like I asked her something and she was like, well, I'll just answer you in three weeks. 
<laughs> let me get back to you in three weeks oh my like, god i don't feel like telling you right now but i'll tell you when i feel like it yeah. i i love that idea of the non-linear i'm thinking of it from like i'm just bringing the 12th house perspective here from what i feel like there will be so many times where i will have a random i call it like i know we all have our brains that jump around in a way but i always say that to my husband. I'm like, Oh, brain jump, blah, blah, blah. It's not worth, I say, it's not worth explaining how I got to this. However, mm-hmm. blank. And he's like, that is the most random thing ever. And the way that I really do think it's this and this and this, and it is sometimes continuing a conversation from months ago where I will just text mm-hmm. someone and they'll be like, wait, what? That was from like, you know, December. It's like, oh, well, yeah, but it was just on my brain right now. Or Mm -hmm. I don't know. That is, that feels very uh, 12th house Pisces, the way you're communicating, the way you're processing things. We're just like, everything's in a cloud anyway. And this particular little cloud particle just, you know, it was floating around and now it's back in front of your eyes again. You're like, oh, wait, (laughs) let's let's talk about that one again. (laughs) Yeah. Pisces Mercury is like always in a non-verbal communication with self Mm. like it's always feeding information but it doesn't have to necessarily be nonverbal. but it's always going somewhere it's always like feeling the energy and processing the energy and and i don't know yeah it's mutable it's moving with self yeah that's true watching a pisces mercury child you just see their inner world as like unreal (laughs) <laughs> well the I last bit see. here that i have from alice sparkly cat uh is that they might have trouble fitting in and felt like they had to hide parts of themselves they have beautiful large and fun closets ones that have lived in for a, ones they have lived in for a long time so <laughs> i mean like narnia i love that idea <laughs> like narnia you know or like actual clothing Ooh, i think they're saying narnia I feel like I feel I like think so too. Yeah. Yeah. The fantasy. The yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We're on the same page. Uh, Mercury and Pisces. I would love like to play dress up with a Mercury and Pisces. Oh. You just play imagination and play yes. pretend. Yes. The answer is yes. You can come <laughs> over. I, I got to come over. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> do you want to put baby to bed? <laughs> yes, I do. Absolutely. I do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So yeah, then we move on to the three sun placements. So if you um, don't know, Mercury can only be one sign away from the sun because they are besties. Um, So that means that we can have an Aquarius sun with Pisces Mercury, a Pisces sun with Pisces Mercury, and an Aries sun with Pisces Mercury. Yeah. So Martha, tell us about this Aries sun with Pisces Mercury that- Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Because I really want to. I'm like the only- Pisces Mercury's I know they're all Aries so Mm. um I feel like it's a hard placement because Aries moves in such a way of confidence and people are thrown off communicating with a Pisces Mercury because like an Aries and Pisces Mercury because they're expecting this like confident like go-getter and then they're like wait what's happening you're not communicating in the same way that you move your body and Mm. prime example my daughter is very physically adept, adapt, and people just speak with her and expect her to be able to have a full blown conversation with them because she moves in like such a, like a a mature way. Like she's moving like a five-year-old at like three Mm. years old. And then people talk with her and she can't speak yet. And Mm. it's like, throws people off. Cause like, Oh, I just assumed like she was developing, the way she moves. And I see Mm. that in adults as well. Like talking to an adult Aries with a Mercury Pisces. Sorry, I cannot say that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's, it's, it's confusing because they're so, they can be so competitive, so aggressive. And so like in your face, hanging out, and then you'll be like writing with them and they're like aloof. And like, you're like, Oh, I guess they don't like me, but it's like, really, Mm. they didn't even realize they didn't answer your text. They, they were just doing their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. That blend of Aries and Pisces. Cause Pisces, we said like, as all about surrender and release of ego and don't need to prove anything. Whereas Aries is like, I need to prove that I am capable as just my own vessel. And our guest actually is an Aries on Pisces Mercury. So I, I'm really excited to hear what she has to say about that, that lived experience. But 
Aries Pisces blends. And just from my own experience, it's such a huge, like back and forth of, um, am I supposed to be putting myself forward or am I supposed to be blending into the universe? Yeah. Which side do you want losing (laughs) yourself and like, then, but then also being so sure of yourself because you're in Aries yeah. and you can lead any group and you're fucking amazing. And it's like, whoa, it's so <laughs> misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pisces, Mercury, misunderstood. That's a really good term for it. And then if we had like an Aquarius sun with a Pisces, Mercury on the other side of that, I think it might bring like when we talked about in, you know, our Aquarius episode, I feel like it could bring a little bit more of the, I mean, it brings more of the emotion to the detached uh, tendencies mm. there, you know? I th- mm. I think it tempers that Aquarius sun. Yeah. Um, I do still think a lot of reflection would need to come in place for this character, this yeah. John Doe, um, <laughs> because they would need so much time to reflect by themselves. And Aquarius is reclusive. Pisces energy very reclusive. I feel like they would have a conversation that was so expansive and then need to go like sit in their room for three days and be like, okay, how did I actually feel about that conversation? Cause at the moment it felt mm. good, but yeah. Yeah. Aquarius are the aliens that live on earth and Pisces are the humans that aren't living on this planet, you know? So it's like yeah. this weird, like where in space are we actually with that Pisces? Yeah. Pisces is like, not living on the planet, but also is every single speck of dust on this planet. It's a very the universe. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Aquarius son of Pisces Mercury is the one who would talk up like these big dreams and like an ideal situation. And then that Aquarius son would be like, great, we're actually going to do this now. Right. Like we're not just talk. I like mm-hmm. that positive side of it. Yes. Yeah. The Pisces energy reminds me of that phrase of as like what's above as below we are all within or what's that saying i know what you're saying yeah someone listening knows that saying like what's above and below whatever whatever it's like we are like we're all one all connected whatever the saying was gonna hit if one of you guys knew (laughs) (laughs) but we're all average witches and (laughs) don't know yeah oh my god well for pisces sun pisces mercury i feel like that could go either way depending on the rest of the placements because i tend to think of the same sun and mercury as being like how i think and act is how i speak and you know do but with pisces it's very all over the place and ethereal and connected and and you know foggy and dreamy and so i i mean this is someone who could be like an amazing you know artist and um i don't know there there's so many there's so many possibilities for this double pisces energy here but i can't quite tell if um if the articulate nature would be increased or decreased with the double pisces mm. i google i mean yeah. oh Oh, oh my God, what's Martha. he saying? Oh my God. As above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Yeah, that's Pisces. Right, it had to be said. <laughs> <laughs> God, I just had such a Grinch laugh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, crap. Have fun future, Sierra, editing this. Oh my gosh, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But going back to Pisces Mercury artists, yes, absolutely. And with a Pisces sun, they're really meant to just like, I like, I feel like the Pisces sun, Pisces Mercury is an artist for the sake of art. Whereas maybe an airy sun, Pisces Mercury is an artist for the sake of being seen and the sake of like being Mm. the center. Uh, And similar for Aquarius too, of like, this is art for the, for the, greater good of humanity and and stuff like that like this art will spread a message um but pisces sun and pisces mercury really could go either way depending on how you feel about your own sensitivity if you feel like you are leaning more into like a suppression of the feels and like a shame around your sense of emotion then 
I could see how these two placements would like allow themselves for you to swallow yourself up and to like hide and to self-isolate in an unhealthy manner. But in the same way, I could see that this Pisces sun and Pisces Mercury, if you are honoring your sense of emotions, you also would need to self-isolate as a means of self-care and to, you know, take care of your mind, take care of your life force energy, take care of that vitality. Yeah. Mm. Pisces, sun, Pisces, Mercury, regardless of how it's showing up in life, I feel like they're, they're artistically expressing, creatively expressing Mm -hmm. it's not a choice. It's like a lifestyle, you know, it's, it's how, it's how they are. It's not like I'm going to make art. art. It's just me existing is creating art, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Or like the universe around me is just art in itself. And like, I'm just here to experience it. Yeah. Mm. So I'm excited to hear what our guest has to say. Yes. Hey everyone, before we get into the second part of the episode, we just want you guys to all know that we choose our guests with as much care as we can based on astrology placements. While we respect each person's right to their own beliefs, it may not align exactly with ours, but thank you for listening and please enjoy the rest of the episode. So welcome back. It's Martha Mimi and our, our guest, Donna. Welcome, Donna. Hi. Nice to see everyone here. This is fun. Yeah. We're excited I mean, I don't to, get uh... to do this in my like my day job. So <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So Donna, why don't you share your top three? Let us know your sun, moon, and rising. So my son is in Aries. My ascendant is um in Cancer. Mm-hmm. and um my moon is in gemini yes. so super interesting and it's in the 12th house so i think that actually has had some when you put it all together yeah interesting <laughs> just I'll, I'll use the word interesting for now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i mean it definitely adds to like the piscean element right 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 for sure 
what are your thoughts on astrology? I love astrology. I think it's an incredible way of, well, for me, I see it as a, a place for growth and to really get a good idea of who you are as a person. I also, um, for me, in terms of life path and, and where we are all going as a human species in, in terms of collective consciousness, I, I, I really dig into astrology. I think about the fact that Pluto is going to be moving out of Capricorn into Aquarius mm-hmm. and what that means. I work with a, a younger generation. I work with teenagers and I see how they're already almost... It's almost like in their g- genome, right? They're they're they just already get it. They understand the idea of inclusiveness and and um, yeah, and they're ready for systems to change. So mm-hmm. I feel like <laughs> there's so much being um, so much preparation happening in order for us to to move into that <clears throat> 22 year cycle mm-hmm. of Pluto and Aquarius. So yeah, I mean. And I've actually started to do um, other people's charts combined with tarot. And, you know, what I'm realizing is that my, I'm moving away from my mundane job and moving into astrology and, and the esoteric as another way of, of being in the world Mm. and bringing whatever I have to the world. I feel so, like you bring that perspective or you brought that perspective to what you call your mundane job as well, that you bring a holistic mm-hmm. approach to human nature. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and combined with my, my master's program, which was in leadership and negotiation, a lot of it is about um, like conflict resolution and how you, you're always in negotiation with people. Mm. Always. You're it's just what relationships are. I think we start thinking about our how we walk through the world we're it's always relational Hmm. and so I think astrology can have a really profound effect on how we we are we bring our best selves to the table Hmm. and um yeah so and it's been a long journey for me believe me you know this was not (laughs) something I was doing when I was in my 20s that's for for sure I was like locked into a really scientific brain that, um, you know, was geeking out in the lab and, and astrology. I mean, I knew I was a spiritual person beyond just simply this body, but, you know, I wasn't ready yet to be where I'm, where I am now. And of course, mm-hmm. I always believe you come to places. Divine timing is important. All mm-hmm. of us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Can I, can I ask what your day job is or mundane job? Yeah, I am the science department chair at an independent school and I work with, it's, it's uh, girl centered. So it's teenagers from uh, ninth grade, which would be about age 14 to 12th grade, which is about 18. And, um, you know, and I run a department and I, you know, I'm teaching the sciences. So, Mm. um, but I also, whenever I'm in front of my students or working with my students, I'm bringing a lot of what I'm learning and have learned into the classroom because I really, I mean, for me, it's a very humanistic approach. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. Yeah. So I also think um, the younger generations are so receptive to this kind of stuff right now as well. Mm. Yeah. I just taught a little mini astrology class to about (gasps) 10 students and then, and and a faculty um, wife actually came into the, into the the class and it was just, you know, some of the, the basics, right. You know, talk Mm. about the houses, the different signs, and then had them layer, you know, the, the fill in the different houses and then go into their own chart and start to sort of do all of that layering that happens when you are doing astrology, it becomes so rich with information. And, and I also have been doing um, themed sort of uh, dives into people's charts. One is the gifts you bring. So I really take a look at their natal chart. And then um, I've been doing this thing called who am I, where we look Mm. at where we are right here, right now, and sort of really help people think about what they have to offer. Because I do believe that we have a tendency, if we're thoughtful people, I think we can be overly critical of ourselves. 
<laughs> and um, and if we can actually sort of move away from being that overly critical, I think you should be should be self reflective, obviously, and um, be careful in how we interact with others. But I also think that if we start focusing more on our gifts and what we can bring to the table, then you know, I if I can help people do that, then I'm I do that in my teaching with students. I hope to do that with the people that I interact with. Martha, you are talking to two Saturn and Pisces people who needed to hear that today. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not Martha, Donna. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, sorry. I said, I meant Donna. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. well, and if you look at my chart, you know, with, um, you know, I have a lot going on in my ninth house. I have this, you know, cancer rising. The moon is really, really absolutely important to me. It, you know, I used to fight it. And now yeah. I'm like, no, I love the moon. I follow its cycle. I understand its influence on me. I'm meant to be a deeply emotional person who cares mm-hmm. a great deal, who can become moody, who's greatly influenced by the opinions of others, all of that. <laughs> and then when you start putting Mercury and Pisces in my ninth house, well, you know, and at 15 degrees, well, yeah, I need to be reflective on mm. the moon and what that means and what Pisces means and that mutable water sign. Yeah, let's focus on this Mercury and Pisces. We discussed how mm. a Mercury and Pisces might need a bit more of a mental break than other than other Mercury signs. Do you feel the need for more alone time or or kind of tend towards self isolation? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, also you got <laughs> moon in the twelfth, so. <laughs> Yeah, I do. And you know, it's so interesting because I did this like sort of personality test for a friend who's a psychologist here at Miss Hall's. And um, I'm sort of like right in between. I love to be with people, but then I really need to go and, and hide. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I like to have a very comfortable home. My home is really, really important to me. And because I know that that's actually my little nest. There's a, there's a tarot card that I love. It's a, it's the four of swords, but it's a woman actually in a huge nest and she's oh. curled up in the fetal yes. position, sort of she's on her side. And I'm like, yeah, I, I very much relate to that. <laughs> yeah. I really, really do. Um, yeah. This is not one of the questions, but I just thought of it now when you were a child, was a lot of your play by yourself? Yeah, um, I was just in an astrology class with Sheila, and um, we started laughing because in my fifth house, I have, um, I have, uh, um, it's there's Scorpio there, but also um, Neptune, and and I was thinking of that, oh, that that was actually a placement that would give me a hard time, you know, but actually it didn't. It's it's that literally living in the world of fantasy and it actually helped mm-hmm. me survive my childhood because yeah. I would, I would actually, I would have whole conversations with characters that I was reading in books or made up all by myself. Now, some people would have put me into like a very special place with padded <laughs> walls, right? But, but it was the, the way living in that fantasy world, the world that I created, the, a beautiful world Hmm. It it really was helpful for me. And so, yeah, I definitely took time to be, I love to read. I love to be alone in nature. Hmm. I mean, I had hmm. siblings. I love my siblings very, very much, but I was definitely not a gregarious kid who, who was um, in need of a ton of friends. It was, that was not the, who I was. When you did have friends or even now in adulthood, do you find you have um, the tendency to mirror people sometimes? Uh, no, I actually don't do that. And mm. I think what, where I do have an effect is that I'm greatly influenced by what people think of me. Mm. And so I have to be very, very careful about that. Right. Because, and I, and as I move, as we move from, you know, as Pluto moves into Aquarius, one of the things I did was create almost like a declaration to self. And that was to not define myself by any labels or by anyone else and be very conscious about that. So not as a mom, a teacher, a wife, a whatever, you know, um, whatever definition that's thrown at you, especially in terms of gender, right? 
-hmm. and really move away from that and go like, well, who am I by my own terms? And so, um, and you know, you know, I've been on the planet a few decades, so it's <laughs> taking me a while to get there. Um, yeah. But I was highly influenced by the opinion. Of, and it would actually affect me in my solar plexus. I would be very anxious and get upset about yeah. um, if someone was up, didn't, um, I, I needed to be, feel like I was liked. It was, you know, it was a profound, um, I think a disability actually in some ways, because, you know, not everyone's going to like you. And it's really until, it's only until I actually did a deep dive into tarot and astrology that I really understood like how it was affecting me that, and it was part of my, the placements in my chart, that natal chart and how I, it was something that it was a challenge for me to overcome, hmm. which is what I love about astrology in general, right? Because it presents you with challenges in your lifetime that you can overcome, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like your answer was such a beautiful blend of the Aries and the Pisces Mercury, because that really intuitive thought process around the question of who am I, that really screamed to me that first house, that Aries energy, and then that Pisces Mercury. Yeah. And I think my Gemini moon actually is another play in the 12th house has just, you know, I, I it's, it's like, okay, so we're going to infuse in your DNA, Donna Daigle, this need to really dig deep into the things that are unknown and discover those things so that you can actually work with other people and help them discover their own self in ways that are beautiful. And I'm sorry, I get very emotional. I'm getting very emotional too. So it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I really think that this is a, this can be a really, really hard world. It can be harsh. It can be tough. And I think if you can bring some uh, love, right. I mean, I'm wearing this bracelet. I I won't take it off. And it's just the word love. And I'm really working hard to bring that, that forward in, and not in, you know, like I call it the woo woo love way. Like, you know, I was a child of the seventies. So I understand like, like how I can become um, almost a, um, a foggy place if you're not careful, but if you're doing it with real intention, you know, what does love look like in the moment? What does a love look like in tough situations in relationship? Um, you know, really it, that's, you know, taking your ego, putting it aside. Um, but also knowing that you deserve to be treated with just as much respect and decency you would give to others. Um, yeah, we had sort of touched on how the Aries Pisces blend is one it's all, it's a hurdle, but it's also when you overcome that hurdle, there's so much, deep connection to your universal self or self within the universe because Aries wants so badly to know who they are and to feel connected to that sense of self and Pisces wants so badly to dissipate into the ether and just be with the universe and so when you start relating yourself to part of the entire universe it can be very overwhelming to know what is just uniquely you mm-hmm yeah, especially when you're sitting there going, I am based on what you think, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the other. So yeah. so it, there was a lot of foggy time for me around who I who I am. Yeah. Um, and really define myself by labels and what other people um, expected of me and thought. There's a whole part to that too. Um when you have, I think when you have Mercury in Pisces specifically you write your script in that way. And then you have to really work at rewriting the script. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things I truly struggled with was people pleasing. I think there's a people pleasing aspect to this. Mm -hmm. And, and then you have to really interrogate, like, why am I a, why am I a people? First of all, you don't even realize you're a people. I was convinced I was a collaborator. <laughs> I'm collaborating with others. Look at me, you know, like we're working <laughs> together. When in fact, I was actually a people pleaser or an accommodator, I was accommodating others. And what's really interesting is when you're accommodating others, you are giving more value to the relationship than to yourself. Mm. And what you really should be saying is, well, how do, how do we both benefit here? It's okay yeah. to say, say to yourself, so what am I getting out of this? Yeah. And if it, and if you're not getting, if you're constantly 
because what you will end up doing is being in relationships where you feel resentful and right. Because that, <laughs> mm-hmm. what, because what you're actually looking for is validation. Yeah. That touches on a point exactly of, of what we had discussed. And it kind of was related to the mirroring people because when you mirror somebody, you're losing yourself. And so there can be kind of resentment being harbored there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Because, oh, thank you. That just gave me like a bloop, like of inspiration <laughs> because Martha, you mentioned the mirroring and now, yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> the people pleasing part. So. In a true Mercury and Pisces way, we got there. <laughs> we got there. That's so funny. Um, yeah. So I would say my people pleasing tendencies for the majority of my life um, really had, <clears throat> oh my God, it, talk about really having a, in some ways, a, a really negative effect on um, my relationships, my sense of self. Mm. Um, and it, it really blocked my power, my, and my authenticity. I mean, it, there was, there's so much wrapped up in it, my agency, my real voice, mm. because r- what you're doing is mirroring what other people want from you. Yeah. So that sort of touches, I mean, I think we kind of you sort of answered this, but more in early childhood because Mercury rules those early education days, early developmental days. Did you feel emotionally unseen or unheard? Oh, definitely. And I was, I knew that when I signed that contract before I came down here and I didn't read the fine print, <laughs> it was going to, it said, and your parents will be too busy trying to earn a living and climb out of poverty to actually be able to spend time and really see you as a person. Mm. I mean, it was, I was meant to go through that in a way that was going to be tough. And, you know, I got lost. I really, really did for a while. Mm. And that's, you know, and that was, and that's part of my journey. Yeah. Part of my journey. Um, and, you know, and of course you have to go through the healing process and all of that sort of thing, mm. um, which makes you an incredible healer. Right. I think, as I look back and say, okay, what can I bring to the table? How can I have, where's my empathy? Mm. Um, it helps me with the empathy, but you're absolutely, yes, Mimi, I would say that I was definitely a child who was incompletely seen, um, definitely labeled. I was the pretty daughter, right? Mm. I was smart because I was like science geek um, in some ways, but that was definitely, but I was not seen as a creative and I am a creative. Mm. Um do you have certain ways that you express yourself like artistically? Well, I definitely write poetry. I I like to create. <laughs> Excuse me. That's that, thank you. That's the most so literal. <laughs> the that's beautiful. Pisces Keep, and Mercury. Yeah. yeah. I mean that you couldn't like and I as a child I used to write poetry that and I remember a time so this is a part this is interesting because speaking of not being seen I was actually chosen to be part of a group of of children who would go into a very special school and really like work on their creative writing process. I was a really creative Mm -hmm. kid, Um, but my parents didn't want me to do it. They were just like, no, this is not something they either they were too busy to sign me up or what have you, but it just never happened. And I know that put me on a different pathway as I truly was the kid who wanted to take and be Spock from Star Trek while also (laughs) being, you know, like this creative being, right? Um, So it definitely sent me down a pathway that was different than the creative pathway, but I still, and I love, I love, I love metaphor. I love metaphor Mm. everywhere. I see metaphor in everything. In a tree becomes a metaphor for me. Um, The candlelight becomes a metaphor for everything is a metaphor. That's beautiful. And that I feel is also like that moon and Gemini and, and instinctively and divinely connecting to your words. Did Mm. you feel that those method or like modes of expression were ways that you wanted to be seen or more because you just needed to get it out? I think, I think I needed to get it out because I was such an emotional child. That was a way of, for me to help uh, work the Gemini moon, um, and Pisces, I needed to put it down into words so that I could actually Mm. work with those emotions or at least just get them out of, like they were so bottled up inside of 
my little body, mm. you know, and now they still actually are a means for me to, to express that emotional part of me. I don't know how many poems I've written sobbing and they are some of the, my best poems. Yeah. Like literally I am weeping from the very soul of my being. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> crying and writing, you know, <laughs> well, it was, it's such a cliche, but literally teardrops on the paper kind of yes. moment. Yeah. 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 Coming from your most sensitive point. Mm-hmm. That that cancer, right? Yeah. Crack open the shell and like really pour it out, you know. Yeah. And not to mention the Scorpio on the fifth house. When you express yourself, it's going to be it's going intense. to be cathartic, yeah, and intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, really intense. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Donna, this, it's so nice to see an example of a Pisces Mercury and you really have been a perfect example of Mercury mm-hmm. and Pisces. So thank you so much for coming on and, and yeah, sure. chatting with us. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're definitely welcome. I was going to say one other thing and that yeah, is please. here we have the ninth house, right? And that's where the placement is. And what do I do for a living? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. an educator, I'm an education and and I just, and I want to get as many degrees as possible. So there's also <laughs> that part there too, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really, I love this. Yeah. Talk about astrology all day. I know. <laughs> and we just cut it to like 25 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, so I'll let you go. Yeah. Uh, Martha, why did we talk about Mercury and Pisces today? Because the stars made us do it. 